Welcome back to Athletic Every Day, day number 35. Today's workout was another upper body day, and it was the alternation of the first workout of the week. So for those of you that don't know, I alternate strict press, bench press, strict press, so that every single week I'm doing two sessions with strict press and then one session with bench press. And the reason for doing the pressing movements is because I don't really have as much pushing strength in comparison to pulling strength. And when you have an imbalance, whether it's, whether it's push pull, whether it's um, lateral, like one, your right side is stronger than your left side and imbalance that way, or whether it's um, posterior anterior, like your posterior chain is much stronger than your anterior chain, i.e. your glutes and hamstrings are much stronger than your quads. That can lead to some serious problems uh, down the road. So I'm, Pretty good at pulling, I've got good pulling strength. My deadlift is relatively much stronger than my squat and my pull-ups are relatively stronger than my bench press and my overhead press and my strict press and my push press as well. And I've always found that to be kind of one of my weakest areas which is why I'm doing so much of it and I'm kind of neglecting the pulling. Even though in the past I have mentioned that front lever is a pulling exercise, it's just more isometric in nature. And I guess you could say that Muscle ups are kind of a push and a pull. They're kind of like, well, they're a little bit of everything, really. You even use your core and your legs for momentum, but for the most part, it's a push and a pull. It's kind of like vertical pull, vertical push. It's a dip and a pull up uh, all in one. Um, but yeah, going back to this training session, uh, I found that the bench press went really well. That's the first time I've ever done five sets, five sets of four with 100 kilos. That's like the heaviest I've ever worked up to. And the muscle ups were feeling really good. Thing uh, you can just scroll back and watch in the video is that on the first set, I kind of jumped, I was standing further away from the bar and I jumped further forward to get some momentum into the pull up because it's very hard to do a complete dead hang muscle up. You need to have a little bit of momentum. But on the second and third set, I realized that because I, I, every time I finish this, I always watch back the form in my rest periods. And I noticed that I was almost horizontal when I was pulling myself up and over the bar, which was probably a non-optimal form for, for muscle ups. For a perfect muscle up form, you want to be as straight as possible. Um, uh, it, you, basically, if you drew a line straight down from the bar, par, uh, perpendicular to the floor, you want to be as parallel as, as parallel as possible to that line all the way through the pool. It's not necessarily possible to do that, but the more perfect the form, the more it's going to look like that. So on those second and third sets, I tried to stand a bit closer underneath the bar so that I could pull myself more vertically straight upwards to make the form look better. And let me know what you guys thought of the form. Did the form look better in the first set, second set or third set? Then moving on to the bench press and front lever superset. So I did a superset between these two exercises because generally I would consider them to be non-disruptive. Uh, just like with front lever and strict press, they're pulling and pushing exercises. They're working different muscle groups. I mean, yes, you're probably using some of the same fixator slash stabilizing muscles, uh, you know, core wise, back wise. But I think uh, for the most part, I've never really noticed any disruption between the sets on this, just like with the overhead press and the front lever. Uh, for the front lever, I like to mix it up between isometric holds and dynamic uh, raises. So you'll notice on that first set, I did front lever raises with the full front lever, and I found those really, really difficult. So I moved on to a straddle front lever raise, which I found a little bit easier, but I still feel like I should be able to hold it at the top for just a little bit more time, just like a second or two or half a second at least. Uh, and then when I struggled to do that, I then moved on to uh, front lever raise negatives. So you start at the top and then just lower as slowly as you can, but then you'll see on this rep right here, I could barely even hold it and I just load it down. It just goes to show that I'm, I'm not so good at front lever and I need to work on it a lot more. But out of all of my calisthenics, like advanced calisthenics movements, that is the one that I am closest to getting. I'm nowhere near a planche and I'm nowhere near a handstand press up. So we should start seeing some gains on the front lever since I am training it now three times a week. I think that is enough volume and enough intensity to be giving it the stimulus and the muscles that are involved in the front lever, the stimulus, in order to progress the movement. And then on this last set here, I did this as, I can't remember what this particular variant is called. I think it's called a half tuck front lever, where you just bend the knees. So you basically have a straight line going from your knees to your shoulders. Uh, it's supposed to be easier than the straddle, but I genuinely find the straddle easier than this. You can tell me really struggling. So for the last couple of reps, I did it as negatives again. 
But once again, super duper, it's super duper difficult to do a negative. I think there is definitely some real value in the negative, trying to just hold the position, every position all the way down. But obviously it gets progressively harder the more and more horizontal your legs get. So that's a good way of measuring your progress is at what angle do you start to lose control and where do your legs start to fall off? And hopefully over the next few weeks and months or well, years as well, you'll see that my legs start to get lower and lower and I'm able to hold it in that position a bit, a bit lower. And then obviously the end goal is to hold it in a completely horizontal position when you're doing that movement. And then the yeah, bench press, just watching this back now, I did notice that there's a little bit of an unevenness between my left and right arm. Sometimes the bar, it might just be the angle of the camera, but sometimes it seems like my left side is dipping lower than my right side, which again could be an imbalance. I'm right-handed. Maybe my right side is a bit stronger. Perhaps I was gripping the bar differently on one side, or maybe it's uh, an imbalance somewhere further up uh, in, the, in the kinetic chain, maybe in my shoulder or in my shoulder blade. Who knows? But all in all, I will take that. And I finished up with some awkward plate carries. So this is 20 kilos in each hand, but it's very difficult because I'm having to grip such a wide, wide grip. So the smaller plate is 10 kilos and that's got a nice handle on it, but the bigger plate is also 10 kilos and I'm only sort of pinching that with my thumb. But overall, good workout and I will catch you guys in the next one.